Ladies and <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> Welcome everybody, thanks for coming in. My name is Brian Red. welcome to Video Mixing 101, sponsored by American DJ and American Audio. We have on the decks over here, Mr. Edgar DJ Etronic. He's a DMC champion from the United States, give a big round of applause. He's gonna be just cutting up video throughout the entire seminar, playing around at a low volume, and he'll chime in once in a while with his expertise on this business of video mixing. We also have Mr. Andy Crampton here from Manchester. He is our local expert we're gonna to talk to and refer to him for any questions we might have as to how we're doing it here in the UK. Again, I'm Brian Rad, and I'll chime in and help out where I can as well. This is a one-on-one -on -one seminar, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm ever talking too fast, please say something. I'm more than happy to slow down a little bit. I know how the dialects can get a little funny, so please let me know. We're going to go over the basics. We're going to talk about what it's going to take to get you started in video mixing from equipment to materials, resources on where to get your music videos. We're going to also talk about how to make some money at this, which I'm sure you all would be interested to know. Now, could you please raise your hands and show me how many people out there are currently using music video with your mobiles? How many people out there would love to get into music video with their mobile systems? Please raise your hands. Who wants to do this? Only five of you, that's it? Come on, there's more than that. You're here for a reason. Get your hands up. Who wants to get into video mixing? Excellent. We're going to try to help you out with that today and give you a few pointers and some expert advice. So, first of all, it's always better to see than talk about things. So one more time, can you give us a little uh, sample of what you're doing. Show us show us a little show off. You guys like to see some video mixing, alright? Some serious DMC style video mixing. That's pretty impressive, right? It's pretty cool. Give me a round of applause. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to talk to our pal Edgar and ask him, how are you doing this? What are we using as far as equipment goes? Give us a breakdown. Uh, what I'm using here is this uh, VMS 4.1 from American Audio, and um, basically just using the, the output out of my computer, uh, just the, the mini display port, and um, with the software that's included, you know, the Virtual DJ Pro, I can play MP4s, pretty much any type of video file, and so with uh, using the MIDI controller like the VMS 4, I can uh, crossfade and scratch and you know pretty much mix all my music videos and blend them just like music, so you can do kind of like a you know regular DJ set just with music video. So essentially what we have is a MIDI controller. This one happens to be the VMS 4.1, but there are a lot of MIDI controllers out there. Anything you pick up that will run Virtual DJ will work well for you. And we have a computer. In Edgar's case, we have Mac. How many people are using Mac? How many people are using PC? Really, folks, it all works the same. It's just a matter of video adapters. So it's video out of your laptop. 
and you split your screen. One side goes to a projector or a monitor. The other side goes to obviously your screen, and that's where you mix that. You have all of your mixing consoles, controls, whatever you want right there. Now, tell us a little bit about the media. We wanted to talk about that as far as storing your video files. They are MP4, they are larger than MP3. So what are you using to store your files on? How big of a drive and how many files do you fear you can get on something like that? Uh, it's recommended to use uh, you know, an external hard drive. Um, when I DJ, when I'm using video, I don't typically do it this way. I just have this set pretty much in my library. So, But if I'm gonna gig out, of course, you know, I'm using about over a thousand videos at a time, I'm gonna wanna use an external hard drive. Usually if you have like a terabyte, that's recommended because music videos, I mean, you take about 10 songs to one music video for, for memory or storage, so you're gonna to wanna to have a, a large hard drive in order to store a lot of music videos. Would there be a hard drive that would be too big for music video? If we went with a two terabyte or something like that, is that too big of a hard drive for a computer to access, or is that okay? Oh, that'll be okay. Uh, you might run into, I guess, maybe some uh, some freezing or something like that just because of the, the processing or anything like that, but... Right. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and talk to our guy in the UK who's actually effectively doing music video as a mobile DJ very effectively, right? Yeah. Um, mobile, well, worked as a mobile DJ, video DJ. It works really, really well for weddings, for birthday parties, for ADs, for school proms. It's just an additional package that you can offer to people. Okay, so what you're doing is you're talking to your clients. Obviously, it's the music. And then, is this more of an added package that you're offering to them, or do they come to you knowing that you're already doing music video at this point? It's a little bit of both. Um, on my website, there's obviously, I'm advertising, I'm doing music video. Sometimes they come to me through Facebook, etc. They don't realize they're looking at music video as well. They turn around and say, well, you know, this is what we're looking for, and then you offer the extra package to them. Would you like music video with that? Would you like our photographer with that? Well, what's the photographer for? And that's when your screens come in and you offer the music video as well. Your photographer will then load the pictures onto the screen so that people can see them during the night. And I cut them in and out of the videos to match. Right. Now, you're doing this all over the island, basically. Yeah. You're everywhere. Yeah, I'm literally, I travel the UK, literally. Um, I live up in Manchester, or just outside of Manchester. I've been so far down as far as Taunton in Somerset and bouncing up and down in their backyard, which is a 500 mile round trip for me. Money is there, it proves the money is there to get me to travel that far to do it. Obviously. Forgive me if I glance at my notes once in a while. We're trying to make this run smoothly for you today. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Edgar. We're gonna talk to him. Edgar does it a little different. Edgar's primarily mixing in nightclubs. Now, how does that differ, do you feel, from people mixing in a mobile setting? You're doing more club music, you don't have to worry so much about content, maybe, at a club? Right, yeah, you can pretty much get away and play any kind of music videos, uh, but you're going to want to have good quality because a lot of these places you're going into maybe have, you know, one to, like, one large TV or many TVs, and if you don't have good quality videos, you're probably not going to get that gig again. So when I gig out, I try to make sure that I have good quality music videos, and you really got to just stay on top of, um, you know, your library and new music, so you're going to want to sign up to a service where you can get new music all the time, just like a regular uh, DJ service. There definitely is a quality issue with the video as well. You want to look really nice in the club. Yeah, definitely. Because if you don't, the next guy's going to look really good and you can be out the door. Yeah, yeah that's it. All right, cool. Now, I'm back over here to talk to Andy a little bit. I want you to explain to the people of how you're using things like animations and why you're using them. Because sometimes we don't have a video for a song. And what do you do if you're doing music video? What are you stuck? You have a blank screen? And he's going to talk about animations a little bit for us and how that works. There's two or three kinds of animations that I use. The first one is a personalized animation. If it's a wedding, then I'll, I'll actually make up a 3D anima animation. Talking teeth him. Animation, put it up on the screens, and it's like the bride and groom's name will float across the screen with love hearts coming from it, or rings around it. Just general sort of, to fit the theme, or 18th birthdays, obviously. 
it's at that point I'd sort of drop my name in, you'd end up with Disco Dreams across the screen, wishes, whoever's birthday it is, a happy 18th. You can also get what they call um, background animations, which are generic animations that you run across the top. Sometimes it's blurs, sometimes it's just psychedelic colours, but we run those across the top as well. When you haven't got a music video, don't leave your screens blank, I think is the main message, isn't it? It's, it looks bad. If you've got the screens there, keep them used. Or again, like I said, I use my photographer a lot. She comes back to me with the photographs, and we put those across the screens as well. Well, we have companies here uh, at the show, actually, from only is here, and they do a lot of ambient videos. So they're just kind of crazy, weird, kaleidoscope-looking random things that you can actually put into Virtual DJ to automatically play whenever you're playing just a regular old MP3. So that's helpful. And I use it a lot because I do some nightclub DJing as well. So let's talk about some of these animations you're using again. You said that you're using some custom stuff and you're making it yourself. How are you doing this? What program are you using to make these type of custom animations that are maybe best wishes, you know, Betty and Steve or whoever your bride and groom are? Right. Um, the easiest way to do it, or I found, is a program called Bluff 3D Titler. So easy to use, it's even easier than using Windows Editor or iMovie. It's literally put into it what you want, colour the background, and later on you can get creative by adding your own backgrounds, and basically the program does the job for you. You can click it up, set the timeline actually on the video itself as opposed to on a timeline. Tell it where you want the animation to be, where you want it to finish, and the program works the rest out for you. So you don't have to be an expert? No, 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 no. You don't have to be an expert at all, and if you really do get stuck, there's a couple of companies about that do produce animations for you. Like I said, there's Promo Only, Phil Beerman that's here at the moment as well. Both of them, they produce excellent animations at quite a low cost. Right. So I'm going to ask you, Andrew, do you ever do any kind of animations like that or visuals or ambience when you do video at the bar? Yeah, because uh, as you see, I, I do a lot of scratching, so what I try to get is my own videos. Uh, I use Sony Vegas, and what I'm do doing is just taking like still images, just because uh, when I'm scratching, the, the images don't move so fast. So a lot of times if you're doing scratching, it's good to do that because it might you know, kind of blind the audience or something like that. So. I, I use Vegas, it's pretty simple, and it's good for like video remixing too, in case you want to take uh, content from a video and put a different song behind it. It's pretty cool and easy to use. While I'm over here, I want to ask you a question, and some of you may be curious. What happens when you need to play a video like Michael Jackson's Thriller, with all that bad acting at the beginning? What do you do with that? Oh, that's what's nice about using software like uh, like Virtual DJ and like a, like a MIDI controller because I can set up a cue point and easily jump to where the song begins. So just by hitting the cue point in that song, I can jump to where the, the Thriller song actually starts and I can just bypass the intro. That's a good point. Yeah, cue points are real nice in a program like Virtual DJ.